Hey guys, it's Rob here. We're going to look at, uh, you know, well, we looked at Compass and SAS. So let's look at Compass and SAS uh, as it pertains to Yeoman. Um, we took a little detour to look at those directly. But this time I'm going to say yes and include Twitter Bootstrap for Compass instead of CSS. And the rest of the stuff we don't care about. So it's going to generate these SCSS files. And those are our SAS partials. Um, you can tell that they're partials by this underscore. Let's go ahead and open that up in our text editor. Um, let's see here. Let's get this right size. Well, these are going to be in styles. And the way this works, you can see we've got this main CSS. And it calls import for compass underscore Twitter underscore bootstrap, which is this guy. And he, in turn, uh, he imports Compass itself and then all of these Compass Twitter Bootstrap mix uh, uh, partials, mix-ins, reset, variables, uh, and a whole bunch of these guys. And these are all in this directory. And they start with underscore. And for example, if we open up the variables, you can see black is defined. So they can use that throughout, um, throughout the SAS as a variable, um, gray darker, gray dark, um, accent colors, scaffolding, um, typography, sans font family. So that's your main sans font, uh, font family. And then the serif font family. And then mono font family is probably for, for the pre's for when you're doing code. Um, right, so let's look at tables because in the first video we did something like this in our markup right we said class equals table by the way I use single quotes there kind of a no-no uh, I wished I <laughs> would have used double quotes usually I mean you can do it and obviously it worked but usually you'd use double uh, double quotes for for um, markup and you can see that my uh, smart editor is picking up table bordered and table striped some of these familiar things that we saw in the first video because they're in the same file All right so here's the table the table one and um, it's fairly big they've done quite a bit they've uh, you've got all this for free and this baseline height is used uh, used everywhere let's go ahead and open up variables and just search for that so Oh, they're doing a good job of being consistent and all their variables are defined in this variables um, partial and then we see the familiar table bordered that was putting borders on our table making it look more and more like a data grid and um, that's a pretty sizable chunk of CSS for free table striped here um, so they're using nth child to stripe Get some zebra striping action, table hover. So we can go to the source now and, and have a look at exactly how they're implementing this stuff if we'd like. Um, the Twitter bootstrap documentation we reference shows you which classes to use, but sometimes it's useful to, to have a look at the source itself. Um, so one thing I wanted to show you was that um, if we start up Yeoman server, remember we used generic CSS and we made um, changes to the markup and, and had this live watching going but well, we can do the same thing using the um, the SAS format and actually go into let's go out to layouts the layouts partial and and uh, just disclaimer we don't actually want to do this in these core files um, generally but just to sort of see what's going on if we've made a border of one pixel solid red and do a margin top 200 and save we'll see that the live reloading is working for this as well so you can actually edit your SAS compass or yeah, SAS compass files and uh, live reload will still work for you so we could have done that whole first uh, screencast uh, with the rapid prototype web page using using the the SAS if we wanted to and I wanted you to see that um, let's look at um, let's go into a pay, our page here and take 
everything within this container and delete it and save. And let's create a form and just place a button. My cool button. Okay, so a button's going to show up. Looks pretty vanilla here. Um, if we go into our buttons partial, we can see this BTN class that we used uh, earlier. That's a standard button class to give it that um, give your button the Twitter bootstrap look and feel. Uh, BTN and bam, we've got some CSS3 kicking in here, some rounded edges here, and some um, some different shades, a little gradient going on. So let's look at that guy. It's pretty sizable. It's it's not even fitting on my screen here. They're doing a bunch of IE7 sort of uh, fixes for you. You can see there's a button background mix-in. Recall that um, ampersand include is how you get a mix-in going in SAS. And let's look in mix-ins um, for for this guy and do a quick search. So this is uh, looking like a, a function and it takes a star color, an end color, text color, a text shadow. We won't even, I'm just going to wave my hands and say text shadow just works. But, um, you know, you could Google around and figure out how that's working. But if we go back to how this is called, um, for button, they're using the, the, the main button background that they uh, defined in their variables partial and background, a button background highlight and gray dark in these colors, and they're calling that mix in here. So this is like a method call, and this is where that mixin is defined. And in turn, mixins can call mixins. So the button background is calling gradient bar and um, gradient reset filter and doing some other stuff for us. And, um, and so we can go ahead and look through this. And oh, here's uh, include border radius. So let's... Uh, look at this. Let's do some. Let's do something a bit sacrilegious and just change this. Um, and you can see this turns into more of a rounded button. Again, I just said don't ever edit these files. Well, nice thing is, is with Yeoman, I just generated this project. I'm going to delete it after this podcast anyway, so we can practice around and actually pry a little bit with this stuff. Um, it's pretty powerful. And then. Did the box shadow here? So a lot of stuff for free we're getting from this one BTN class. Let's just zip through this file real quick. We see a button large, small, mini block. We've got some primary button morning, button danger. Let's just go back in here and use some of these guys. So we're gonna say, let's try our button large, right? I'm gonna save, and you can see it gets larger. Let's make it a primary. It's going to change the background color, right? And we can pretty much trust that this stuff just works, and it's just kind of beautiful. But we can also look at the source really easily and, 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 and get a better understanding of what they're doing under the hood. And that's it for buttons. I mean, it's about 200 lines. Uh, pretty understandable. It's probably worth knowing that this stuff is there to be referenced if you need it. Sort of like you want to treat it as a black box or you know you don't want to reinvent the wheel but sometimes you have to build a wheel to understand how the wheel works if you know if you really want to code so anyway um what else did i want to go over well when we looked at this main.css sort of the build flow was the main css is called this guy and compass twitter bootstrap included or imported all all these other partials well, i was curious um you know, because Twitter Bootstrap is originally done using less. And so I was wondering, you know, did the Yeoman guys do this themselves? You know, did they convert the less files to, to SAS? Um, and then I Googled for this guy and VWall, this GitHub comes up. And if you look at the directions, <laughs> they say import Compass Twitter Bootstrap. That's exactly what's happening over here. And also... Um, it's very active. Um, when I look at the commits, come on, open up. 
my connection is a little slow so you can see it's really actively being developed um, and lastly when I went in and actually looked at some of these files in style sheets it looks the same as what I'm seeing so it looks like Yeoman's um, picking this guy up and really that's what Yeoman does a great job with it. I mean there's a lot of research involved to go pick out the 10 cool front end uh, tools you want to use so if you find that Yeoman's using something that you're not really clued in on it's probably worth going and having a look and seeing how how that stuff works anyway um, and you can of course uh, choose mix and match your own your own choices but um, I think that's about all we really need to go over. Um, oh, one one last quick thing I wanted to go over was, um, say you're in here in tables and um, and well, actually, let's go back to buttons rather over here. <coughs> so, say you're looking in here and you say, oh, box shadow. Um, I probably know just to go to mixins. To find that, but say I didn't know where that was. One quick tri trick you can do, especially if you're quickly putting this stuff together, is to get a knit um, the project and put it all in local source control like this. All right, and now I can say git grep um, box shadow and uh, that gives me a lot of a lot of information. Um, let's say, well, we know it's a mixin, so let's do this. Let's put it in quotes and say mixin, and then dot star, which means any any characters between there. Okay, so that's going to we're going to ignore these binary files, but that points me right to the file where it happened. And sure enough, we knew it was in mixins. But this is a way to find stuff quickly if you're sort of unsure of where it is. So sure enough, if we open up mixins, uh, there it is, right? Uh, I can spell mixin. Okay. So it looks like they just take uh, take the original signature required for box shadow and then they just abstract the vendor prefix stuff for you but that was the point of that was just to show you if you're unsure where something is a little technique using git and uh, throwing throwing the code under under git and, and doing a git grep um, I could do something like this find from the current directory I name uh, is going to be what are these SCSS files and uh, XARGs? I can even remember how I used to do this. Egrep. No. <laughs> X print zero. Pass that to XARGs. Zero. Egrep. Uh, what was it? <laughs> it's like by the time I get here, I'm. I'm not even sure what I was searching for. Box shadow. So that got it, of course, right? That was a lot of my hands are hurting now though. <laughs> and the git grep was a lot more convenient. So I'm fine with just throwing this thing under git and and searching that way. Plus you can hack on it and um, you know save stuff lo locally and, and then roll back if you want sort of software archaeology and stuff anyway um, that's about it for this video and I hope you got something out of it see you next time